we're going to be looking at directional selection here. And um, first off, when we're looking at this curve, the bell curve, um, you'll see the terms like average, below average, and above average, which I put in quotations. I'm actually using these terms kind of loosely um, because not, you know, if we're looking at traits that we're, we're going to move directionally, it's, it's not always quantifiable. Uh, like hair color, like brown is not a number. So, um, but we can't see, you know, most people will have an average form of a trait. So there's going to be the two opposing ends, um, which are more or less just less than the average. There's fewer people with red hair than brown hair. So that would be, you know, quote unquote below average or above, depending on what end you want to put it on. So in directional selection, what we're going to end up seeing is this bell cur curve, uh, the average is going to shift in one direction or the other direction based on uh, which side of this graph has a, a higher level of fitness, a better chance to survive and produce children, passing on your uh, genes and traits. So it can shift either way. It just depends on which organisms have the um, survival advantage. It could be the below average group or it could be the above average group. One or the other, not both. So when, what's going to end up happening is if uh, these organisms over here, the Shaquille O'Neal's, if they have a survival advantage, then they're going to survive better. They're going to probably produce more children to future generations with, with whatever trait we happen to be looking at. As a result, the population size with this form of the trait, this variant, it's, it's low right now, but what you would see over time is the number of individuals with this form of the trait, they would start to go up. They would become more common in the population. These individuals with average, um, they'll still be present, but you would start to see in terms of the total population, the 100% of the population, this percentage it is going to to go down a bit. And it makes sense because if, you know, in a percent, if everything has to add, add up to 100% and one side goes up, then by default, and the other side has to go down. Um, another thing to consider is if these individuals who are above average are having more kids, then there's going to be some of those just by chance that have, you know, an even more above average form of that trait. And what we end up having with directional selection is the bell curve, it starts to kind of shift a little bit. And we have a decrease where the average was, an increase on where one side of the uh, bell curve happened to lie. In essence, the average it has shifted in this scenario towards the side with the above average phenotype, meaning that the average becomes less common and the below average individuals, they're, they're almost hard to find at all, like even harder than they were before. So directional selection, it can go either way. It just depends on which individuals uh, above or below average happen to have um, a higher level of fitness.